Hello and welcome to Zip Code Lookups. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. By the end of this video, you'll be able to type in a zip code into Excel and have the state and city name fields automatically populate themselves. It uses a little free web service lookup. It's pretty cool. Let's head to the first exercise, exercise one. Did you know there's this free web service that does zip code lookups? It returns like the primary city, the state, the state abbreviation, and some other values. And we can easily use this right in Excel. Let's say we wanted to look up the zip code 9000 seven. This is the URL, and at the end, you just pass the zip code you want to look up. And we can see what it returns by going to any web browser tab. I paste in the URL, and this is what's returned. And let me zoom in. We can see it returns the country, country abbreviation, postcode. It returns the place name, that's the primary city, longitude, latitude, state, full name, and state abbreviation. And we can pull this right into Excel with the web service function. Let's go back to Excel. Here we just go equals web service. And we could type in a URL enclosed in quotes, or we can just point it to the cell value in B6. Close function and enter. And as you can see, this returns the same thing that our web browser returned. But what if we wanted to let the user type in the zip code in a cell? Well, that takes us to the next exercise, exercise two. Here we want to allow the user to type in a zip code in C6. And then we want to use the web service function to do the zip code lookup. Equal equals web service. Now in quotes, and I paste the URL, close quote, and then I'm going to join that with the ampersand to the value here in C6, close function, enter. Okay. Now the user can type in any zip code here. 90007 returns Los Angeles. 90620 returns Buena Park and so on. Now let's say we want to extract the state and the primary city. Okay. There's several different ways we could go about this. Now, if I scroll over to the right, what we notice is the state abbreviation is always the last value. So one way to do it is we could just start at the end and go back until we get to the state abbreviation. And that's what we'll do here. So the way that we do that is we use the mid function. And the mid function just means we want to grab some characters out of the middle of this text string. So what is the text string? Well, it's the value returned by the web service function here in C8, comma. And what's the starting position that we want to begin our extraction? Let's start by calculating the length of it. In other words, how many characters there are. We'll use the length function to do that. And again, we'll get the length of C8. And then we know we have to back it up a little bit. I think there was like a closing paren, a curly brace, maybe another closing paren. So we'll just guess and we'll say minus three, comma. And then how many characters do we want to retrieve? We want to get two. So we close function and enter. Okay, and I didn't back it up far enough. So let's go with minus four, enter. Okay, not far enough. Let's go minus five and enter. Okay, and there we got it. And let's put in another zip code just to make sure it works. How about one zero 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 eight? Okay, and we get New York. Perfect. Now, let's talk about how to pull out this primary city. Rather than rely on counting the exact number of characters, let's just look for the label place name because we know it's going to be right after that. So what we can do is we can use the search function and we can say, go find place name. I could type that in quotes or I could just use the value in the cell to the left, which is the same thing, place name, comma, within text. Okay, so that just means within the value in C8, close function and enter. So this is saying that the label place name starts at the 95th character. So I actually don't want to start my extraction there. I need to bump it to the right a little bit. How many? I don't know. We'll take a guess that it's about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, maybe 14. So we'll take 95 and then we'll add a little offset of, we'll call it 14 and we'll adjust that if needed. Okay. And now we need to know when to stop that extraction. So let's just look for the word longitude and then we'll back that up a little bit. So once again, I'll use the search function to go find and I could type in longitude enclosed in quotes, but since I have it here in B12, I'll just use that. Within text, that's C8 and close function and enter. So it's saying it found the word longitude at the 126th position. We actually want to back that up a little bit. I don't know exactly how much, but we'll just for now subtract, call it three, and we'll see how close we get. Okay, so now we have the starting and we have the ending. So let's figure out the primary city. Once again, we'll use the mid function. And the text is the text here in C8. And the starting position is here in D11. 
comma, and the number of characters is the difference between our starting and ending position. So that's simply going to be the value in D12 minus the value in D11. Close function and enter. Okay, we got pretty close actually. I think we just need to subtract one additional value. So instead of backing it up three, we'll back it up four. Okay, and we got it. And let's test it out, 90620. And that looks like it's working well. Now, instead of having all these helper cells, let's combine all this logic into a single formula in the next exercise, exercise three. Okay, so here we have our entry form. We're gonna enter the name, address, and zip, and we want to automatically populate the city and state. So for now, let's use the web service function. I'm gonna paste in the URL, close quote, join it with an ampersand to whatever the user typed in C8. Close function and enter. Okay, this is looking good. Okay, let's do the city. Now we're gonna use the same logic we used before, but we're gonna combine it into a single formula. My favorite way to do that is by using the let function, equals let. Now the let function allows us to define names that we can reuse in subsequent function arguments. Then the scope of those names are just within this function. So here's how it works. We're gonna name API, and we're gonna set that equal to whatever is returned in B12. Shortly, we're gonna put that web service function in here, but for now, we'll just get started with this, comma. Now the next name is gonna be called place start, and it is gonna be equal to, and we'll use the same technique we used before. We're gonna use the search function to find the label place name. We're gonna look for it in API close function, and then we need to bump it to the right a little bit. I think it was about 14, comma. And then we'll define the name place end. And once again, we'll use the search function to find the word longitude. And we're gonna look for it within API, close function, and then we needed to subtract, I think it was four or five, we'll make any adjustments later. And then we'll define the word place length. And that is gonna be equal to place end minus place start, comma. And then we're gonna define the name place. And it is equal to, and once again, we'll use the mid function to look in API to start at place start for the number of characters of place length. Close the mid function and comma. And now what do we want to return? We wanna return place close function and enter. Okay, and it worked. And let's use another zip code, 10007. Okay, looking good. And now for the state, equals, once again, we'll use the let function, and API is gonna be equal to this, comma, and we're gonna call this state, and once again, we'll use the mid function, and we're gonna look in the text API. We're gonna start at, and once again, it was the length of API minus maybe five. We'll fine tune that if we need to. Comma, for the number of characters of two. Close the function, comma, and what do we want to return? We want to return state. Close function and enter. Okay, and we got it. Now, let's get this web service function out of here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy all of this, and we're gonna cruise over here, and we're gonna edit B12. And instead of looking at B12, we're gonna paste and enter. Looks good. And we'll do the same thing with our state formula. Just replace B12 with a paste and enter. And now we don't need this. Okay, awesome. So now we're cruising down here, we're filling out our little customer form here, and we have a zip like 90620, enter, and we get the primary city and the state. Okay, let's test it out with another zip code. How about 01101, enter. Okay, and now we get some errors, and why is that? Well, if we look at this, Excel is converting this number with the leading zero, and it's removing the leading zero. So all we need to do to fix this is convert this to text. And the way that we'll do that is we'll open up the Format Cells dialog, and we'll select text, and click OK. And now let's type it in again, 01101, enter. Okay, and now we got it. So. That's how we can use the web service function to basically do a zip code lookup. However, the lookup database is not stored in our Excel file, it's stored online. And that's pretty cool if you ask me. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.
Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.